friends welcome back to food prep guide and welcome back to this pantry challenge i'm nervous today because i know what i'm gonna do in this video and i'm kind of second guessing myself like should i really be filming this <laughs> it's a science experiment in the kitchen but it's gonna the thing it's gonna help us so two things we're just having breakfast for supper nothing major but for our biscuits we are going to be doing a different type of biscuit called butter dip biscuits really good they're not your typical you know kneading out your biscuit dough and cutting out your little circles and baking them that way they're called butter dip because you start with just a stick of melted butter in the bottom of your pan you mix your dough and just plop it right in there smooth it out cut out little squares and bake them so that's the first thing we're going to do it calls for buttermilk we don't buy or stock buttermilk but we do have a little hack of how you can turn regular milk into buttermilk really fast like five minutes fast so we'll talk about that and then we're going to talk about the science experiment in this bucket behind me is three dozen water glassed eggs if you don't know what water glassing is it's just a way to preserve eggs long term how long well we're about to find out um, not on purpose it was an accident but I found this bucket in my closet from 2021. <laughs> when I saw it, I realized what it was and remembered that I put that in my closet as an experiment to take out in the summer of 2022 to see if we could get water glass eggs to last a year. I completely forgot about it. So now we are 18 months past the point that water glass eggs typically last the traditional school of thought is that they only last about nine months we're gonna find out if they can actually last 18 months the reason i'm nervous is because rotten eggs if you don't know i mean obviously everybody knows rotten eggs are terrible and they smell bad but you might not know that if you just barely touch a rotten egg it explodes it's almost like it's under pressure so one tiny little tap of my hand on a rotten egg is gonna send a domino effect of exploding eggs. And my house is gonna smell terrible and it's just gonna be gross. But you know what? It would be awesome to know, can water glassed eggs last 18 months? If you don't know, if we haven't watched past videos, we raise chickens, but it's January and I did not do a good job last year of preserving eggs. So I don't have any fresh eggs coming in. So we are going to see how these water glassed eggs. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. We're gonna talk about how to test your eggs and see if they're good, all that fun stuff. Okay, these biscuits take about 30 minutes to make, so let's get going on it. I preheated my oven to 450 degrees. The first step is you're gonna melt one stick of butter, and then you're just gonna pour it into a nine by nine baking dish. Next, we're gonna get started on our dough. It is two and a half cups of flour and one and a half tablespoons of sugar, and that's where I left off. Now we're gonna do one tablespoon of baking powder. I'll have this recipe typed up for you on the blog. One tablespoon of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half. We're gonna whisk that together. Next, we're going to add our buttermilk. Now, like I said, we don't stock or store buy buttermilk, but uh, right before I started filming, I, we need one and three quarters cup. So I poured one and three quarters cup in this pint jar. And to every one cup of milk, you can add one tablespoon of white distilled vinegar. Shake it up, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then you have what is really close to buttermilk. So for this one and three quarter cup of milk, I added one and a half tablespoons of vinegar. I've been shaking it, it's been sitting here on the counter, and now it's ready to be used. So I'm going to, we might need a little bit more, so I'm not gonna pour all of this in here. Um, I did a little tiny bit more than one and three quarters cup. So let's pour that out, one and about three quarters i'm going to leave just a little bit more and then we're going to mix it up okay so how do you know if you need to add more buttermilk you want a really thick really sticky dough so this is really thick and really sticky it's not dry at all so i am not going to add that additional buttermilk so at this point, we just plop this right on top of our baking dish that is full of butter at the bottom. OK, 
Okay, at this point, I'm going to spray my hand with a little bit of olive oil spray. Kind of mix it around. And then I'm just going to pat the dough down into hopefully a somewhat even layer. And that butter that's in the bottom of this pan will come up and spill over on top of the dough and that's perfectly fine. We actually want that to happen. And I'm just going to try to get it nice and as even as possible. What, I re what we really don't want is we don't want it to be hilled up in the middle because then we'll end up with a doughy middle and overcooked outsides. So I'm trying to smooth it down in the middle really good. Okay, wash my hands real quick. Now we're going to take a knife and just divide this as best as we can into nine equal sections. This isn't, this isn't gonna cut perfectly and that's fine. We're gonna be able to cut them and pull them apart just fine when they're done and baked. This is just to make the pulling apart of the biscuits easier for the end product. Okay, here's what they look like. And these are ready to go into the oven for 40 minutes. Actually, 30 minutes, and we're gonna check it and make sure it's not burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on for 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to take the camera and I want you to, sh to show you what it looks like, what the top, you know, bird's eye view looks like of water glassed eggs because this was the first test that let me know, hey, these might still be viable. So I want you to show you what that looks like. Okay, here's what the inside of the bucket looks like. As you can see, it just almost looks like murky water, but it's still, actually on the camera, it kind of looks brown, uh, which we don't want, but in real life, it totally does not look as brown as it looks on camera. But it is cloudy, there's, you can, what looks like a film on top, and that's exactly what water glass eggs should look like. If there had been eggs that had been, that had exploded in here, uh, first of all, when, as soon as I open the lid, it would be just a nauseating smell. But second of all, you would see green water. Um, so, okay, I'm going to set you back up and we will start testing. Okay, y'all. <laughs> I'm so nervous. So what I'm going to do, I have a bowl of cold water right here and I have a separate bowl over here. I'm going to reach in and take one egg out of it out at a time and put it in this cold water. In case you don't know, you can test an egg's viability by putting it in a bowl of cold water. If it floats to the top, it's not good. If it sinks to the bottom, you're good to go normally. We'll move on to the third test that we'll do in a minute. But first, let's see. I have a second empty bowl over here because for every good egg, I'm gonna take it out and put it in a separate bowl because I might be putting another egg that isn't good and it exploded and it might ruin the whole bowl of water. So, okay, here we go. 18 month old water glass eggs. Ooh. Okay, okay, so far no explosions. Like I said, rotten eggs, it's almost like they're pressurized they can explode just from touching them. Okay, into the water. Oh, it sinks! We're good! Okay, I'm gonna very gently take this out, put it into my good bowl, and we're just gonna keep going. Mm. Okay, here we go. We're good, that one sunk too. So far so good. I need, I forgot to mention, I need a dozen. We're a family of five, and whenever we cook breakfast for supper, we always use a dozen eggs. Two for me and the kiddos, three for daddy. <laughs> okay. These are all sinking, y'all. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. Now we're gonna do another test just to make sure, because the water test isn't 100% foolproof but it is pretty reliable. So far, so good. We're at four eggs. I'm just waiting for that pop. Ugh. 
you've ever dealt with exploding eggs before, you know it's not an experiment. Uh, it's not an experience experience that you ever want to go through again. <laughs> Another good one. Okay, I'm getting a little bit more confident. Five down, seven to go. We're good. I'm getting a little excited now. I know I don't need to get ahead of myself, but 18 months. That's the longest I've ever, and like I said, I didn't mean to. I totally forgot these were back there. Oh, so far so good. Okay. Every egg is sinking. Another good one. Oh, ooh, this one feels light. That's another thing. Rotten eggs are very, very light. This one feels kind of light, lighter than the other ones. The other eggs were pretty heavy. Since it felt light, I'm going to give it just a little bit of extra time in that water. It's not budging at all. It would normally be floating by now, or at least starting to rock and float at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the good bowl. We'll see. I don't know how well you can see inside this bowl, but some of the eggs have little white flakes on the surface. And when I put them in the bowl, those flakes are coming off that's perfectly fine. That's just that layer that the lime creates. I think I forgot to mention how water glassing eggs works, but it's just water and hydrated lime that you pour on top of it. I don't remember the exact ratio, so I don't want to tell you wrong, but I will uh, look at my notes and post in the description box below the ratio from lime to water. Okay, I lost count. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna wash this out and then we're gonna do the next test. Okay, you know what I was just thinking? I was thinking there might be somebody out there who's kind of wigging out at the idea of eating 18 month old eggs. But here's the thing about eggs. You're not gonna accidentally eat a bad egg. You're not gonna accidentally eat an egg that is gonna make you sick because the signs of a bad egg are immediate and you can't you know, mistake whether or not it's bad. So if, we've, if it passes all of these tests, it is a good egg, it's fine, it's not gonna make you sick. So the next test whew, is to crack them open and look at the smell and uh, color. Smell and color, so here we go. Let me move these over here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep it over here because if any of them are rotten and they explode, it's gonna get all over my oven, which is cooking biscuits and stuff, and it would just be a lot easier to clean a mess over here. So I'm going to leave it over there. Here we go. Cracking open an 18 month old egg. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. It would have exploded by now if it was bad. Okay. Let's talk about this smelling the shell totally fine okay let's look at this here's our first egg you can see that the yolk is no longer holding together and you can see that the white part is liquidy that's exactly what water glassing does to eggs this is not a sign of a bad egg at all water glassing will cause that white to be a little bit liquidy and it will cause that yolk over time to non no longer hold its shape. Now if you have a water glass egg that's only three months or six months old, you might get a good yolk that's still holding its shape, but this is totally fine. There's no discoloration whatsoever. I'm going to smell it. No smell whatsoever. This egg is totally fine. Oh my goodness, I want to do a happy dance. 18 months, y'all. Okay. Whew. Okay. Here's what I need to do. There's still a chance that there's going to be some rotten ones. I don't want to mix. I don't want to crack open into the same bowl. Let me grab another bowl so that I can um, crack open each egg individually. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Egg number two. <gasps> oh, 
This one's holding its shape. Oh, oh my word, y'all. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Look at this. It goes against what I just told you, but I've, I've never, oh, I just can't even believe this. Can y'all see that? I hope you can. Camera focus. There we go. That egg is still holding its shape. And the egg whites isn't even as liquidy. Smell test, totally fine. <laughs> Y'all, if you raise chickens, you know how big of a deal this is. And if you don't raise chickens and you know the price of eggs right now, you know how big of a deal this is. <laughs> Smells fine, looks fine. Another yolk holding together. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm a little bit more confident to move a little faster. Watch me say that and want to explode in my face right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll look at this one. You see that discoloration on the yolk and watch how it's sticking to the shell and not coming out real easy. Now this egg might possibly still be fine. It doesn't smell and there's no discoloration other than that white part. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this one out and not chance it. Be right back. Okay, back at it. That one was a tad bit hard to come out but it still did plop out. And it doesn't have any discoloration like the other one had. Still totally no smell at all. This is a good egg. Smells good. Looks good. Same consistency that it should be. Another good egg. Oh, perfect. Perfect. This one was super watery, but that's okay. Like I said, that's what water glassed eggs are. That's what they look like, especially after they've been in storage for a few months. 18 months in this case, <laughs> accidentally. Let's keep going. And that shell was really weak. It cracked, it like kind of almost disintegrated. But that's fine too, that's not a sign that it's bad. Smell test is good. Texture, color, everything looks good. Um, you, that, I, I don't know if you could tell, but when I cracked open that egg, the, sh the shell at my fingertips like just almost disintegrated. That's another thing that can happen to water glass eggs over time. No, okay. This one still smells fine, but it has this reddish tint to it. It might be okay, but again, I'm just not gonna chance it since I've got plenty more to test in there. Let me wash this out. Okay, let's keep going. Looks good. Smells fine. Another good egg. Last one. I did lose two, so I'm gonna add maybe one or two more. Looks good. It's got a little bit of a pink tint to it. Now, pink tint does not necessarily mean bad. If these were three or six month old eggs, I would, I would, I would do it. I wouldn't even think twice about it. But I'm gonna go ahead and toss it just because this is an experiment. I've got more and I've, I've done what, eight or nine now that didn't have any pink tinge to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this out. Okay, I'm gonna pull out two more eggs. I'll just do one more. Oh, perfect. The yolk is perfectly intact, totally fine. No discoloration, no smell. 18 months, oh, y'all, I'm so excited. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna scramble these up, 
make some scrambled eggs from 18 month old eggs and we'll uh, wait for the biscuits to be done. I'll show you what all those look like when it's done cooking. I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay, y'all, everything is done. Look how beautifully these eggs cooked up. Amazing. Year and a half old eggs. Oh, I'm so excited. I've already tasted them. They taste perfect, totally fine. I popped some bacon in the air fryer while we were waiting on the biscuits. Let's talk about the biscuits real quick. Let me get up. Because these biscuits are cooking in butter at the bottom and the butter, you know, kind of leaks over to the top. Butter browns, of course. So you can see the top of these biscuits are brown, but they're not burnt at all. But I set the timer for 30 minutes. I could have and should have taken these out at the 25 minute mark, but I was working on a bacon, scrambling the eggs, and I forgot. So this could have gone 25 minutes, so just bear that in mind. Also, I rotated the pan halfway through cooking time just to avoid any one side getting burnt. Let's look at how fluffy and nice the inside of these biscuits are. Look at that. see how fluffy that is but it's so good I can already smell the buttermilk and remember we didn't actually use buttermilk one tablespoon of vinegar to one cup of milk will give you a product very very similar to buttermilk just put it in a jar shake it up wait 10 minutes use it in a recipe just as you would buttermilk okay guys if y'all enjoyed this please like share subscribe it really helps us out helps us know if the content is good and if we should what kind of content we should keep putting out thank y'all enjoy bye